This is a recording of our playbook. Download it from our website. Welcome to our whiteboard drawing. Day 2, CUCM, CUC, IM&P, and UCCX cluster installation. Installation day overview. This drawing provides an overview of installation day. Let's look at our objective. Cisco's vision is any device, any content, anywhere. The Enterprise 20 objective is to deploy Cisco collaboration. Users can have many devices. Devices include smartphones, tablets, laptops and workstations, as well as phones of various types from simple to HD video enabled. Users will have unified messaging, a single mailbox for all kinds of messages. Users will have web as well as TUI and email access to messages. Users will have IM and presence. Users work at many locations. Users will be mobile. Users will have a simple, intuitive client that works anywhere, on any device. Jabber. We'll start with Cisco's cool standard licenses, Cisco's most popular. We'll deploy these Cisco collaboration applications to get the most from our cool standard licenses. Cisco Unified Communications Manager, Cisco Unity Connection, and Cisco IM and Presence. We also need a customer care solution that leverages our collaboration environment. So we'll also deploy Unified Contact Center Express. We'll look at these other applications later. Conferencing, Paging, Collaboration Edge, Prime Collaboration Management, and social media applications. Our installation day objective is to deploy these Cisco collaboration applications quickly and efficiently. We want this all done in one day. Installation day is a literal, not a figurative day. Let's look at the starting point for installation day. The day one you see on C-Series tasks need to be completed before moving on to installation day. See the drawing, Day 1 Tasks Recap. This is the network we deployed on Day 1 for Enterprise 20. If you have a single BE, then you do not need the Cloud B VLAN. Day 1 UC on C-Series describe the tasks for UC on C-Series in general and BEs in particular. At the end of Day 1, we have networking. The SIMC port is connected to the Production Hardware VLAN. The Production Hypervisor, Production Collab A, and Production Collab B are configured on the trunks to the new servers. At the end of Day 1, the ESXi hosts are installed and configured, and we are ready to install our UC apps. The server is racked and cabled correctly. SIMC is configured. Diagnostics are good. Correct firmware is installed. RAID is configured, the ESXi host is installed and configured, and software delivered with BE is backed up. You also need the following done for installation day. An TP server needs to be configured, running, and reachable. DNS server needs to be configured, running, and reachable. And the SFTP server needs to be configured, running, and reachable. Where to get software and how to configure it is discussed in Configure Jump Server Software. You need the OVAs for the Cisco applications. We use the OVAs shipped with our BE6000 here. Download the OVAs from cisco.com if necessary. If you have a BE, then you can download your versions of these files from the data stores on your ESXi hosts. We use the installation media shipped with our BE6000, as shown here. If you don't have a BE, then you will upload your versions of these files to the data stores on your ESXi hosts as part of the VM deployment process described in Day 2, Deploy VMs from OVAs. 
you need a variety of values for the installation and configuration. Virtual machine hosts, data stores and port groups, Cisco Unified Communications Manager installation information, Cisco Unity Connection installation information, Cisco IAM and Presence installation information, Unified Contact Center Express installation information, and SFTP configuration information. The Excel Spreadsheet Installation Day Information provides a template for you to fill out in advance to ensure you have all the values you need. Download this file from the Subscriber Extras. We have some options for our cluster configurations. Configurations for clusters running on BE6000, BE7000, and UCS servers in general vary depending on the size of the cluster, the server, and whether you have HA or not. For a deployment without HA, there is a single server and all publishers are deployed there. Your Enterprise License Manager should be co-resident with the CUCM for BE6000 or other smaller deployments. This is a subset of when Enterprise 20 deploys and is covered in the drawings. For an HA solution with two servers, the Collab A VLAN corresponds to one server, Enterprise 20 ESXi-A, and Collab B corresponds to the other, Enterprise 20 ESXi-B. Here's a two-server HA deployment for smaller clusters that will work for BE6000, BE7000, or other UCS servers. This is also a subset of what Enterprise 20 deploys and is covered in the drawings. This is the Enterprise 20 deployment for CUCM, CUC, IM&P, and UCCX. ELMA is co-resident with CUCM Pub. We'll install these VMs quickly and efficiently. Now let's talk about the installation day tasks and timeline. Our installation day objective is to deploy these Cisco collaboration applications quickly and efficiently. Why deploy one application at a time when we can deploy a bunch? We'll deploy all four application in HA clusters in one day. We deploy the VMs from OVAs and attach the installation media. We install the publishers. We install the subscribers. The IM&P and UCCX clusters need to be integrated with the CUCM clusters as part of subscriber installation. And we'll complete some post-installation VMware configuration tasks. We'll do some other things that make sense to do on installation day, and we can easily do while waiting for installs to complete. We'll activate all the services we need on the CUCM servers. We'll configure DRS for all four clusters. And we'll integrate CUCM and CUC with ELM. Here are the tasks for our Cisco collaboration, cluster installation and integration laid out in order. Here are the individual tasks to deploy your VMs from OVAs. Upload installation media. This is done for you for BE packages. Deploy CUCM VMs from OVAs. Deploy CUC VMs from OVAs. Deploy IMNP VMs from OVAs. Deploy UCCX VMs from OVAs. And attach installation media. We'll start this first thing at 8 o'clock. We can do all of this in about an hour. We'll do these installs at the same time. We time the process for a slower case, a single server no HA deployment, with all four publishers being installed on a BE6000 medium density server. Launching the CUCM publisher installation is next. Start at 9 o'clock. Launching the installation should take about 20 minutes. You'll be able to log in to CUCM Pub in a little over an hour. Start the CUC Pub installation at 9.20. Launching the installation should take about 20 minutes. You'll be able to log into the CUC Pub in a little over an hour. 
Installing the IMP Publisher is next. Start at 940. Launching the installation should take about 20 minutes. You'll be able to log into the IMP Pub in a little less than an hour. UCCX is the last publisher to install. Start at 10 o'clock. Launching the installation should take about 20 minutes. You'll be able to log in to UCCX Pub in about an hour. Time to go for a coffee. We'll do all of these installs at the same time. The CUCM Publisher installation should have completed. The CUCM VMs are deployed from OVAs and the installation media is attached to the VMs. We can proceed to the subscriber installations. We started these installs at 1045. Launching all three installations should take about an hour. Launch the CUCM subscriber installations before lunch so you don't have to wait on them for the UCCX integration and subscriber installation. The CUC pub installation should have completed by now, and since we've deployed the CUC VMs from OVAs and attached the installation media, we can proceed to the CUC subscriber installation. We started this installation at 11.45. Launching this installation should take about 30 minutes. The IMP pub installation should have completed, so we can start the subscriber installation. Integrating IMNP with the CUCM and launching the installation should take about 45 minutes. Start at 13.15. The UCCX pub installation should have completed. We can proceed to the subscriber installation. We'll start at 1400. Integrating UCCX with the CUCM and launching the installations should take about 45 minutes. Everything is installed or installing. The IMNP and UCCX subscriber installations are probably ongoing. Starting at 1445, we are going to proceed to configure DRS for all four clusters while these installations are completing. Configuring DRS on all four clusters should take about 30 minutes. You deserve a break. Go grab yourself a cookie. All of the clusters have DRS configured. Start the ELM integration at 15.30. Launching the installation should take about 15 minutes. We'll add the licenses later. Everything is installed. The IMNP and UCCX clusters are integrated with the CUCM cluster. DRS is configured and ELM is integrated with CUCM and CUC. These tasks finish the installation. Run UCCX Replication Wizard, validate subscriber installations, virtual machine startup shutdown, upgrade VMware tools, and validate that DRS is working. Start at 1545. Finalizing the installation should take less than an hour. And we are done! Our times are approximate. You can get all this done a little bit quicker, or you can take much longer. Everyone does things differently. If you have a good plan, installation day should go smoothly and the applications will be ready for configuration. Coming up next, CUCM, CUC, IMNP, and UCCX cluster installations deploy VMs from OBAs. Thanks for watching.